Hi folks, welcome back. If you've ever wondered what the performance of the Linux kernel has been like over the years, that's what the paper we're looking at today covers. It looks at how the kernel's performance has evolved over the last seven years. This is an interesting question, at least to me, because I remember back in the 90s and early aughts, a lot of OS research was really obsessed with performance. What is the cost of a context switch? What is the cost of a system call? And so on. But then it seems like interest moved away from that. But the question still remains, has the kernel gotten faster or slower over time? In this paper, the authors construct a micro benchmark which tests the performance of low level kernel operations like context switches and some of the major system calls and then they run this micro benchmark across a number of kernel releases covering the last seven years. And here are the results at a glance. You can see the performance of various system calls plotted over various kernel releases over time. Note that they use version 4 as a baseline. And you can also compare that with which kernel features were enabled across that time so that you can correlate performance increases or decreases with which kernel features got turned on with a release. There are a couple of things to notice about this diagram. First of all, there is a lot of fluctuation in the performance of these kernel operations. You'll see some of them get better and worse over time. But the second thing is that if you look at the very last release, you'll find that the vast majority of kernel operations are now much slower than they were at the beginning. For example, MMAP, poll, send and receive have suffered slowdowns of over 100% over the last seven years. And this is a high level summary of the major causes of these slowdowns. You can see that there's only about 11 of them, but they can be categorized into three big categories. The first one is changes to mitigate security attacks. The second one is new kernel features. And surprisingly, the last one is configuration errors. So let's look at each one of them in a little bit more detail. Recently, there have been a lot of changes to the kernel to mitigate some very high profile attacks like Spectre and Meltdown, and they have affected performance a lot. For example, a change to mitigate Meltdown separates the page tables for kernel space and user space but that leads to a lot of TLB misses every time you cross the user space kernel space boundary, which adversely affects performance. A change to mitigate Spectre tries to hide the effects of indirect jumps, but then it makes these jumps much more expensive. Of course, we also have a lot of brand new features being added to the kernel, a good example is control group memory accounting. This is a very basic features for containers and virtualization, but this means that you do a lot of extra work for counting memory against certain groups whenever memory is allocated or deallocated. And finally, when you have such a large variable space of various configuration options that affect performance, Inevitably, you sometimes end up in a state where things are misconfigured and this leads to bad performance. A very interesting example of performance degradation due to misconfiguration is the force context tracking feature, which was enabled by mistake in several kernel releases. So why is this happening? Of course, some of this is just the price you pay for new features and mitigations to security attacks. But a lot of these regressions could also have been caught by better performance testing. 
Unfortunately, the Linux kernel does not have a great culture around testing the kernel. And a lot of these regressions are caught only when people out in the real world notice and report them. Now, to be fair, testing the Linux kernel is not an easy task. It moves extremely quickly. There is a release every couple of months, and each release contains tens of thousands of commits. Given this, the kernel developers choose to simply not do performance testing. This burden then falls on distribution vendors, companies like Red Hat, that take a kernel and then test it and performance tune it. This means it can take 6 to 18 months to take a new kernel and put it through its paces before it can be released in a stable distribution. So that was a quick look at a paper that looks at how the performance of the Linux kernel has evolved over the last seven years and what are the reasons for why that performance has changed. It really highlights the importance of having a more rigorous performance testing methodology for the kernel. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.